Hey folks! Well, I would like to start getting into some test automation. Um, we're going to be using Bash to write some test scripts, so some scripts to automate our testing process. But first I want to kind of sidetrack a little bit and talk about techniques for parsing the different command line arguments that your script might take in. So this is quite a common problem and there's a few more or less standard solutions that I want to get into a little bit here. So, let's see how we go here. Um, again, the idea is that, you know, usually we've got a whole slew of different command line arguments that we can accept in a script. You think about um, some of the programs that you use, things like ls or cp, where you can pass so many different arguments to them, or g++ or whatever it might be, where you can provide so many different file names and options, and some of the options expect to be followed by a number or by a file name that you know specifies what it's supposed to do for that option. And in general, in Linux, the arguments are expected to be kind of flexible in order. So if I type in foo-i-r, it should do the same thing as if I type in foo-r-i. Right? So it shouldn't really matter what order the user types the arguments in so that they don't have to remember, oh, I always have to push put dash i before dash r and blah, 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 blah. So it's trying to make it user friendly. But that means that the programmer can't write their script or their program to go through and expect all of the different options to be in a specific order. So we need a little bit more flexible process to go through and grab the arguments. So I want to take a look at one technique here. This is pretty widely used. Um, we'll apply it in terms of bash scripting, but the same idea applies anywhere. So what have we got here? The idea is we'll have a bunch of variables that keep track of which settings we've got in place. So whether it's verbose mode or not, um, whether it's whether the, the user is expecting to be given a confirmation prompt before they remove something or not. Uh, whether there's default values for certain things or the order that certain things are supposed to appear in or um, which specific data values are supposed to be printed or which units to use. So we want to go through all these arguments that the user has provided and establish the settings that we're going to use on this run. So you start off by having a big list of all your variables with all the settings in them stuck to the default values and then you iterate through the arguments, through the, the parameters that the user has provided, and each time you see one that you recognize, you go, oh, okay, I have to change this particular setting. So you grab that argument, change that setting, and move on to the next one. Now, if you see anything that's not a setting, then you kind of assume that it's part of the data to be passed on to the program. So we'll go through and sort of strip out all of these options and then whatever's left is what the, the script will actually deal with as it runs. So that's the basic idea. What we'll try doing is as we go through, any of the ones that we don't see as one of these options, the dash whatevers, we'll drop in an array that the program can iterate through afterwards. So again, suppose the idea is we were supposed to go through and do G++ was our program. We've got a bunch of dash something or other options, and we've got a bunch of file names that we're supposed to compile together. And then we've got a dash O that's going to specify the name of the executable. And again, the dash O prog X could appear anywhere in here. The dash wall could appear anywhere in here. The files could prop could be in any order, you know, mixed in amongst these things. Um, I guess the only restriction would be that you couldn't have something in between the dash O and the prog X because the dash O option is expecting that whatever comes next is the actual name of the output file. So we want to be able to go through things like this and extract all the relevant pieces. If we extract things like the dash wall and we extract things like the dash O and whatever file name follows it, then we assume that the things that are left over afterwards are the files we're supposed to be compiling. Right? So you're separating the, the optional values from the data values, if you like, as you iterate through the arguments. So when we're going through this, our script would see the dash wall. It would say, OK, well, that's the setting we're supposed to use for error checking. It would turn that on. And it would remove the dash wall from the arguments list. 
then we see the foo.cpp and the blah.cpp. We don't recognize those as command options, so we assume that they're data values to be stored for use later. All right, so we put those in our array of things to be processed later. You know, we see the dash O, we recognize that. Um, we realize that for our dash O, it means that there should be a file name coming next. So we grab the file name next and set that value as our output file instead of a.out or whatever the default is. And again, when you get to the end of processing the command line arguments, what you've got left in this array are the foo.cpp and blah.cpp. Now, in Bash, and actually in a lot of scripting languages, there's a command called shift that basically lets you pull out and discard the front command line argument, or depending on the language, you know, the front end command line arguments. So what we'll do is say, okay, well, as long as there's still command line arguments left to process, we'll grab the one in front, do whatever it is we have to do with it, and then shift it out of the list. So we've basically got this loop that says, okay, well, let's go through um, while the number of command line arguments that's still left is greater than zero, grab the front one, stick it in a variable, do a shift to get rid of it from the list, and then process it. So um, right now we're just echoing it out, right, to just display the list of command line arguments. But we could, and we will, go through and say, okay, here is where we'll decide whether this is an option that means we have to change some setting or whether it's a data value to be stuck in our array. Now, we can use in Bash a case statement to go through and compare the argument that we're interested in to the different patterns, the different strings that mean something as far as our command line arguments. So maybe I've got a script where the user is allowed to use dash V for verbose to turn to toggle verbose mode, or maybe they're actually allowed to use either dash V or dash and the word verbose, or maybe we want to support a dash M and anything else must be a data value for us to stick in the array. So again, the syntax is case, the variable you want to take a look at in, and then you just give a whole bunch of different patterns. And for each one, you end it with the closing round bracket. Do whatever it is you're going to do with it. And again, right now, we're just printing it out. And then the double semicolon to end that case. So it's a lot like a switch statement in C++, right? Where you're saying switch on some variable. You've got some case value. You've got what you want to do with it and then a break. Similar sort of idea. So we've got one case for the dash V or the dash verbose. We've got one case for the dash M, and then we can use the asterisk to match anything that's left over. So this is basically our else case, or our other case, or our default case. And then just case spelled backwards to uh, end our case statement, and then joys of bash. So this would basically get lumped in, this kind of a case statement would basically get lumped in here in our while loop where we say, okay, while there's still arguments left to process, grab the next argument, shift it out of the list, and go through our case to figure out what to do with it. Do we change a setting, or do we stick it in our array? So, again, if we want to go through and do an example script like this, where we'll accept dash V or dash verbose to turn verbose mode on, dash M to set some default maximum value. So our dash M is going to expect to be followed by an integer. And then what's left other than the dash V's or dash verboses or dash M's are going to be the names of two files, a source file and a destination file. And we're going to expect that of the two names, the first one is the source file, the second one is the destination. So we could see runs of our script like you know dash V and then the two file names and the dash M and some new maximum value or you know the dash m and that max value could appear in between the two of them right the dash v could appear anywhere in this list i guess except between the dash m and the 23 or you might not have any options when you run it it might just be the first file and the second file right so there's all sorts of different possibilities and again the setup that we've got should take care of that so just in terms of looking at this in terms of some actual bash code 
right? We'd have our, you know, hash bang usual idea. We'll have a couple of variables to hold the name of the source file and the destination file when we find them. We'd have our default setting for verbose. Maybe it's off by default. We'd have our default maximum value. And we'll have an empty array for the list of data arguments that we're going to be storing away for processing later. In this case, that'll wind up with the source file and the destination file in it. And we'll keep track of how many command line arguments there are for the script. You know, we'll assume it's zero until we figure out otherwise. Right, then if you'll forgive the ugly layout here. Again, this is basically the same while loop that we looked at earlier. While there are still command line arguments left to grab, grab the front one, stick it in a variable, and just stick it in the variable key, and shift it out, right? Throw it away. Then look at that argument that we just grabbed, see if it matched the verbose pattern. And if it did, we'll turn on verbose mode, right? Set that setting to one. If it matched our dash M, or maybe if we wanted to accept dash dash max or something like that for our, uh, our pattern, again, if it matches that pattern, then we should check and make sure that there is actually a follow on argument for that so that we can grab a maximum value, right? So if there is still something out in the command line arguments, then we'll assume that this next thing is that maximum value. So here we're saying, if there's nothing left in the list of command line arguments, they didn't use it correctly. They gave us a dash M, but nothing afterwards. Otherwise, we'll grab whatever that next argument is, throw it away and use it as our maximum value. Now, of course, here we really should do some error checking and make sure that it was actually an integer and that kind of thing. But, um, but again, that's a relatively simple fix, right? So we go through, check that we've got the arguments that we need, apply our settings. And again, anything else, anything that isn't one of our dash V's or dash M's, we'll assume is a file name to be processed later. So we'll go through and insert that file name, right? We'll grab the file name and insert it into our array. So what we're actually doing here is saying, let's create an array that's just got that file name in it and we'll append that to the end of our array of fixed. So that's what this syntax is doing. You can do this to append one array to the end of another one. So that's all we're doing here, right? So that way we can effectively resize our array as we go. So we've got um, our file name gets added and we'll keep track of how many arguments we've stored in that array. Right, our numargs is going to keep track of how many file or how many names we've stored or how many words we've stored into that array. Right, so in this case, we're, the first time we see one, we'll say, okay, well, we've, we've seen at least one file name. As we're going through the list, if we see another one, we'll add that to it. If we go through, keep going through the list and we see another one, we'll add that to it. Right, so we're just keeping count of how many of these things we see as we go. Now, once we get to the end of our argument processing, so once we're out of that loop, right, once we're out of the while loop, then we can take a look at the number of arguments that we stored away, the number of file names in theory that we stored away. And if it's none, then we can say, hey, you didn't give me a, a name for either file. If it's just one, then we can say, you know, you only gave me one file name, you're supposed to give me two. And otherwise, they've given us the right number of arguments. So we can go through and say, okay, well, our source file is the first one, our destination file is the second one. And then we can go ahead and actually do whatever data processing our script is supposed to do. So here we're just printing it out. But again, the idea is that this is where the, the meat of your script would go. So you can go through and this kind of an approach is used all the time for programs that accept a whole slew of different options, right? It would be easy to add more options to the handling for this, right? If I want to add a dash I or a dash R or whatever it happens to be, I just throw one more case in here and one more setting variable to keep track of it. Right? So this is a very flexible setup. And again, you will see this kind of thing used quite often. Um, I wanted to take a look at Um, just in terms of our sample version here, right? This is essentially that same script, just cleaned up a little bit and uh, um, I hopefully formatted a little bit more nicely. So again, you're seeing this idea that we've got our 
four default settings. We've got our array and an account of how many elements we've stored in the array so far. We've got our while loop that's going through, grabbing the next argument, throwing it, like getting it out of the command line argument list, checking the case, checking for the default cases, either changing the setting or adding that next argument into our stored array. And then we can go through at the end and process all the values that we're working with. So the other thing that I wanted to mention here is that if you get a chance to dig into the source code for some of the other common Linux commands that you wind up using, something like ls or cp or whatever it happens to be, you'll see that they actually do very similar things. So this is the code from deep within inside the ls command for c or for uh, for Linux. And uh, this is, I've just sort of jumped down to where it's processing the command line arguments. So it's a C program, ls is a C program, or written in C. So all it's got is argc and argv for the list of command line arguments. And it's pretty much saying, well, there's still arguments to be processed. Go through, grab the next one, and have some big switch statement that says, okay, well, if it's this one, do this. If it's this argument, do this. If it's this argument, do this. So you will see very much this same sort of idea. And you get the idea that there's, of course, a huge number of different options that you can wind up with in LS and blah, 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 blah. So many different possibilities. <laughs> you get the idea. And then somewhere way down there, there's gonna be a default case for, uh, for handling the actual uh, directory or files that you're supposed to be running ls on. But again, you will see the same style, the same approach used all over the place. All right, that seems like a good place to leave it for now. What we'll do next time around is look at embedding this into, or making use of this kind of approach in some of the more interesting uh, testing scripts, test automation scripts that we'll come up with. <laughs>